Well, hello there, my dear friends, and welcome back to the Scott Reed Project. Now, today, we are going to be doing something really, really cool. Well, it's bordering on lunacy, but it's cool anyway. Now, if you cast your mind back, do you remember years ago, there used to be that game called Build a Beetle? Well, I've come up with a new version. It's meat-centric. It's called Build a Behemoth. What we are doing today is a 15 bird roast yes you heard that right a 15 bird roast and it's what i like to call culinary engineering what a term that is culinary engineering because that's what it is it's absolutely nuts anyway we'll put the camera down on a block and have a look at the contestants that made the cut quite literally this is how we roll on the srp you know it's rock and roll baby Let's do this. Wow, my dear, dear friends, what a motley looking crew we have in front of us here. As you can see, 15 birds all labelled up. Started with the big fella, we got our turkey, the goose, the chicken. Over there, we got our pheasant, our poussin, our widgeon, and our pigeon. I'm a poet and I didn't know it. A teal, a partridge, a mallard, some gressingham duck, some woodcock some quail and some guinea fowl and then right in the center this little cutie a snipe almost looks like a toy from a doll's house now we are going to be boning all these out and then trying to stuff it into the turkey of course we can do it i'm almost professional i think anyway let's get doing this less jiving more working so, the first thing to consider is, how the bloody hell are we going to do this, old bean? How are we going to fit all these into this beautiful turco? Now, obviously some of these birds are fattier than others. Obviously the goose and the duck, and the skin can be quite hard. I mean, really, in your head you're thinking we'll bone them all out and we can just layer them up, but it's not that easy. I think the best option is if we take the breasts off all of these birds obviously the woodcock's already done the quail the guinea fowl and the gressingham duck and then we can layer them in as we feel fit so first thing then is get rid of this big bad boy the turkey i should put that over there and i shall start just taking the breasts off all of these little birds now don't worry the legs and carcasses won't go to waste, they'll all go in stock. Actually, I'm not even gonna bother taking the legs off the pigeon, it's so small. I'm just gonna take the breasts off and then we'll take the skin off. And then when we layer them up, we will layer them up with a beautiful homemade stuffing, which has got quite a good fat content because obviously game can be dry. And we'll mix it in with some, obviously cranberries some citrus to cut through the richness of the game, some breadcrumbs, onions, and some herbs. So, I am gonna quickly nip through all these. I have got plenty of videos out there already showing how to bone out poultry in game. So, maestro, music, please. to goosey goosey gander these legs are definitely going to be confied goose legs and like i said with some of these smaller birds these game birds obviously you know they're shot they're wild so they're not all going to be perfect oh they're going to be absolutely beautiful beautiful mate why am i talking like an australian amazes me with a goose when you see that big carcass it looks a big bird I mean look at the size of the carcass and then when you weigh it up you only get those two breasts those legs and those wings which I love but really the 
uh, meat to bone ratio, you know, is pretty low. So once we got to that stage then, we need to skin all these. These can be quite hard to skin. It won't pull off like a chicken. I mean, the best way is to just go and then they're like done. But if you wonder why your goose produces so much of that beautiful liquid gold, the goose fat, just look at the thickness of that skin and all that fat underneath, you know? I'll render that down, nothing will go to waste. Like I said, the legs will be used, the carcasses. It's all gravy, baby. So, that can go over there. Same with the old duck ducks. Again, you might need to give them a helping hand. But they, as we all know, renders down to liquid gold, duck fat. Fantastic. Right, that's those done. Then simple the chicken. I'm tempted to take the tenderloins out of these actually and save them, but they might go in, I don't know. I really don't know. So there, so there's four different species of duck going in. Then our pidge, I absolutely love pigeon. To me, one of the most underrated game meats. Cooked right, it equals, uh, it's up there with steak. Then we've got our poos on. Another favorite of mine, a guinea fowl. Tastes like chicken used to taste, I suppose. Fantastic bird. We've got our fezzy and our partridge. I have got another partridge over here. I might put the two in, just give that a trim up. Again, a little bit of shot damage. Our quails, I've got a couple of these. So this woodcock, I should just put in as it is actually. I've boned it out. I'm gonna put that in because the skin is thin. And then the deer, deer, deer snipey. Hey, it deserves to go in whole. What do you reckon? Do you reckon that deserves to go in whole and build it around that? I do. It's beautiful. Yeah, snipe is going in whole. Next then, we are gonna work on the mothership, this turkey. So we're gonna bone this out. Again, like I said, I've got several videos I'm boning out a turkey, so I will put the link into the comments. But just pour yourself a drink, sit back, and watch me do the deed. That sounds a bit wrong. trim off any of the excess fat. Now the question is, do we leave the wings and the legs on? So when we put it together, we have more of a turkey looking thing. I don't know. Right. Time to make some stuff in. So what I'll do then is I'll build it first with the legs and the wings on. If it looks okay, which I think it will, because that way when we turn it over and tie it, it'll still resemble a, a turkey. But that is one turkey boned out. Okay then, on to the wonderful stuffing. I've been up to the local butchers, got some sausage meat. Cheers lads. So, now we need to make several layers in between all this meat, because obviously like I said, the game can be dry but really go to town and experiment, you know? I'm going for a bit of a classic one. I've got, what, about two pounds of pork sausage meat. You could use a flavored sausage by all means. I've sweated down two onions, putting no color on them. Oh, look, there's a pheasant. Oh. Put that somewhere. Then I'm going to add, just to start with, a couple of handfuls of breadcrumbs just to see what it's like. Then I have the juice and the zest of two oranges, the juice and the zest of two lemons. Like I said, be adventurous with this, put chestnuts in, put whatever herbs in, whatever liquor you want. I've got some cranberries going in as well. I'm going to put a drop of brandy, 
seeing as that it's Christmas, oh, go for it. And then some fresh herbs, obviously synonymous with pork, synonymous with game, synonymous with a Christmas, fresh sage. Try saying that when you've had a few pints. With my beautiful Samora knife, which I absolutely love. I'm just gonna roughly chop through this. They go in. I've got some parsley. Put a bit of that in. I mean, if you want to, by all means, mix a bit. Make a little ball. Fry it off in the pan. See what you think. Or just live on the edge, baby, like me. And go for it. I'm going to use some dry thyme. The reason I'm using dry thyme is I can't be bothered to pick it all off the branches. And then I'm going to get some salt in there. And some pepper. And it's a case of just getting your hands in. Now already, I need a bit more breadcrumbs. You don't want it too wet. Because you want to be able to manipulate it but then you don't want it too dry so put them in and I think that will give us a beautiful stuff in I mean think about it Christmas you could put Christmas spices in there you could go the other way you know and Jamaican or curried spices or chorizo or bacon it really is up to you but that Oh, smells absolutely awesome. Okay, now the fun part. Let's try and get all these into here. So, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to fold these tenderloins into the leg. And I'm just going to put a little bit down the middle. And in that cavity where we folded back the tenderloin and I don't want to use too much because obviously I want to intersperse the layers now like I said I'm doing this with the legs and wings on to see how it goes so first of all I am going to place my goose breasts down the middle I'll give it a bit more over here get some in that joint of the leg and there and we've got that to play with so next I'm going to put some duck duck in there I think I will go with the chicken in there again some more stuffing just over it, help to lubricate. Next, I will put the guinea fowl. It's nuts, absolutely nuts, isn't it? Plenty of room yet, baby. Now, I did add it, an extra uh, Gressingham duck breast. I won't use that at the moment, so next, I shall put the wild mallard and then I'm going to put the widgeon and those two little teals I'm just going to put in there. Aren't they beautiful? Again, just to keep them nice and moist. Right, Fezzy. I'll put a bit in there actually, I'm going to put the pheasants. Pheasant. My poos on. The quail. Partridge. Again, I added another few to it. Put that on there. This is going to go together, trust me. 
That's a maniacal laugh. That's the laugh of, I ain't got a Scooby-Doo now. The pigeon. And the woodcock. Have a look at this. Eh? Have a look at that. I'm going to try and spatchcock him. He deserves to go in whole. Pull that backbone out. Trim off his little wings. And I'm just going to crush the dear little thing. And he can go, bones and all, just in the top there. Now what I'm going to do, I think, just had an idea, is this fat that came out of the turkey, I'm going to rest in there. Look how ridiculous that is. Eh? Just look at that. Onto the fun bit. Seeing if we can contain all this beautiful stuff. So I'm going to take a little bit of the meat just for the first few knots so they are nice and secure. Now by all means use a blanket stitch whatever. We just need to sew this up just to get a basic shape. So I should put one there and then proceed to gently just sew up the back Always taking a little bit of fat and a little bit of meat. And you can quite comfortably move along it on your own. If not, by all means get someone to give you a hand. As you can see then, I've got some knots there. We're going to just gently, gently, very gently turn it over. I want to fold the wings back into position, manhandle them into position, and then what we'll do is we'll sew up the front part. So I should turn that round and get working on the front. Same principle, always take a little bit of the fat and the meat if you can, and it won't split the skin. Unbelievable, isn't it? Unbelievable. So I'm going to flip it one more time just to close up, as you can see, the front here. And then obviously the same around the back. A bit thin skin there. So nice and gentle. If I can take a bit of that there. Another flip, manipulate the insides, look at that, let's see if we can do something with these front legs, go under the wing, just to hold those legs, and she's looking an absolute beaut. Well, like I said at the start, we were going to build a behemoth and that is exactly what we have done and pretty much managed to retain the turkey shape. Now what I want to do then is just put a bit of bacon across its back and I'm going to tie a few strings just for a holding, maybe give it a little bit more shape. But to be honest, I think that looks absolutely superb. Crazy, but superb. If I may say so myself. Right then, let's just finish this off by putting a few strings around her. And she will pull into shape really nice then with the Christmas string on board. Well there you go, my 15 bird roast. Just have a look at that from the sides. 
the front, the back. And the beauty of this now, it's all trussed up. You can maneuver it around, but what a fantastic looking thing that is. Well, my friends, I hope you enjoyed the episode of the Scott Ree Project and what a monumental undertaking that was. I like to use the phrase culinary engineering because that is what we've done. We fitted 15 birds into one massive multi-bird roast. And if you look on YouTube or Google, the most that's ever been done on video is 10 birds and that was Hugh Fernley Witten store at River Cottage. But now here at the SRP, we have done 15, but not only done 15, it has turned out so well, I'm blown away. It's absolutely fantastic. We'll have one more look at it. Give you a rough idea of the scale. Isn't that a beautiful looking thing? Now, there's a lot of meat there, you know, and it would be a waste for me to cook it just to show you what it looks like. But what I am going to do, I've already put it out there on social media, I am going to give this away for charity. I did the same thing last year with my Tadukan and it went to an absolutely fantastic community group in Pershaw for old age pensioners for their Christmas meal. So I couldn't be happier. So again, I hope to repeat that this year. Any worthy cause in my area, I'm thinking veterans, the homeless, community groups, pensioners, anybody. So it will not go to waste. And it's such a shame that I can't cook it and show it yet, but it deserves to go to a better home. So one more look then, say goodbye. We did it, 15 birds in one. Excellent. So if you've enjoyed this episode then of the Scott Reed Project, please click subscribe. The button's down here somewhere, you know the drill. Click subscribe, it's free. You'll just get a notification of my newest videos. And catch me on my social media, Facebook, The Scott Reed Project. Type in The Scott Reed Project, my page will come up. Click like and you'll be able to keep up to date with what I get to on there. And also on my Twitter, at The Scott Reed Project. So until next time, my friends, have a good Christmas. Believe me, this will be going to a great home. And I will see you again sometime. Take care. Have a good one. All the best.